Okay, so on to the next assignment. In this case, it's uh, 01.2, install MySQL and Workbench. And what we're doing here, we've already installed WAMP, and uh, all this means is that we have the WAMP server installed. Uh, for one part of the class, we'll be using WAMP. And by the way, if it's running for you right now, you can right click on the icon and tell it to exit. Doesn't need to be running all the time. We're going to download MySQL and the MySQL Workbench. This is a separate environment from uh, WAMP. This is actually going to be running exclusively on Windows. It's not going to have uh, some of the functions that WAMP does, but we'll discuss more in that more in depth when we get to it. And by depth, I mean depth. So I'm going to download the first file, which is the uh, .NET. 4.5 setup. These are just some files that Windows needs. I right click on that downloaded file and extract it. Extract all. When I get a new folder, and once that opens, I'll double click. I'm not sure if I have, a, I have already installed this or not, but I'll find out soon enough. So I'll Okay, Microsoft Net, it's already a part, so I already have it installed. If you don't have it installed, if you didn't get this message, go through the process. Uh, there's not much to it other than accept licenses and say yes most of the time. Uh, Microsoft is not that devious, regardless of what you may have heard. Next, I'm going to go to the next link. We're going to download and install the MySQL Community Server. It's important to figure out why it's called community server. MySQL used to be open source. Everybody used it, everybody loved it, everybody contributed to it. And to a certain degree, they still do, but now it's owned by Oracle. So it's kind of a, a private enterprise. They do have an enterprise section, uh, enterprise version of it. But uh, we'll be using the community server. I'll click on the link. It takes me to the MySQL site. And here's the installer. The installer, see all of these programs? This is all the MySQL suite. We just need the server and we need the workbench for this uh, class. The server will actually allow you to run MySQL on your computer. The workbench makes it a lot easier to work with databases. Uh, and that's something that we definitely want to do is to keep it simple. Once again, make sure that you know if you're 32-bit or 64, some of these doesn't matter, like this one will not. I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to download the uh, installer. That's the lower size. This is 18 and a half megs. The other one is 378 megs. They're basically the same, except the second one, the larger one, has all of these programs already included so you're downloading all the programs this one is an installer that will only download what you need so I'm going to click on that download and uh, when we begin to download it tells me to sign up and log in and do all these things to make Oracle I don't know work better I'm just going to say no thanks just start my download and there it goes starting not to say that you may not want to uh, enroll in the MySQL community. That's up to you. Maybe at the end of the class you'll decide, I want to know more about this. I'll click on the caret, show in folder, and there's MySQL installer. I'm going to double click that. Minimize the browser and wait to see what happens. Give it permissions. Yes, let's do this. I want to close that other file. Do you want to allow this app to make changes? Yes. And here's the installer running. And uh, I had seen this before. Basically, the file that we just downloaded is not the latest and greatest. So I'm going to say yes. Just, you know, get me a newer installer than the one you just told me was new. And We'll work with that one. So here's the installer again. 
I'm going to accept the license terms. You can read all of this if you want. Basically, I don't know if it's a big joke. Signature of Tycoon, President of Vice, uh, in 1889, by Yo Yo Dine. I, you know, I don't get it. Next. Okay, so developer default. This is going to install all the products needed. That's all the big list that I showed you. We just want to do the custom because we only need a couple of programs. I'm going to click on next. I'm going to uh, go into the available products list. I'll click on the plus once, twice, three times until I get to drill down to my SQL server. I'm running a 64-bit computer. By the way, although you see this Windows 10 and everything, this is a Mac. If you don't believe me, well, I'll show you later what's going on behind the, uh, the scenes. Not right now. Uh, nonetheless, this version is 64-bit, so that's the one I want. If you have an older computer, and I may have said in another video, if it's older than five years, you may not really know if you have a 32-bit or a 64-bit. 32-bit? software is has the x86 mark while the 64 has x64 once i make this selection i'll click on the right arrow so that it knows that that's what i want installed also from all the applications that we have to choose from we just want the workbench i'll click on plus make sure it's the latest one my sql workbench 6.3.9 etc 64 bit and i'll also move it to the right. So here's my features to be installed, the SQL Server and the Workbench. I click on Next. And in the installation, it's ready to download. I will just execute and see what happens. It's telling me it's downloading. These are not very big files. The suite itself is quite large, but we're just downloading a couple of programs. MySQL Server, if you remember from this WAMP server, that's what it does. It uh, sort of uh, recreates an online environment. The Workbench is just an editor. Think of it as a, uh, I don't know, as a word processor of sorts, something that allows you to keep your documents and your data all in one place. This has begun to install. I hope that at least my installation, maybe yours as well, doesn't require us to install additional visual C++ uh, files since we did that when we installed with the web server. But there's always that possibility that this installation might fail. If it does fail and uh, you can't move forward, please email me and we'll work it out. We'll figure something out. There is no music when installing, so I, all I can do is watch the progress. Almost done. And it says press execute to upgrade. I already did that and now the installation is complete. I'll click on Next. Now we're ready to configure MySQL Server. Click on Next. Uh, type of networking. Do we want a standalone MySQL Server or cluster sandbox to set up for testing only? This sounds complicated. So we're going to stand with uh, the standalone. Next. The configuration file just leaves this alone, I think. This is a development machine and many other applications will be installed on it. The minimal amount of memory will be used by MySQL. More than likely, this is your case. I'm going to leave everything else alone. I'll click on Next. MySQL root password. And this would not be such a bad idea. You know, the web server has, uh, you would be the root user with no password. Here, pick something simple. For this class, I'm going to pick something simple myself, and I'll, I'll keep that information to myself. Uh, don't make it a habit to uh, say your password out loud. Don't use password one. Something else. I have a standard password that I like to use for classes. 
and I'll use that. And it's weak, and that's fine, because that means I can remember. My SQL user accounts, uh, well, for now, we'll leave that blank. We'll just go on to next. Uh, configure my SQL server as a Windows server. Yes, uh, Windows server's name is uh, automatically assigned. Start the MySQL server at system startup. Mm, yeah, sure, why not? I mean, while you're taking this class, you might want to have it there handy. It's not going to take that much memory. Click on Next. Uh, MySQL as a document store, etc. I'm just going to click Next on that as well. And now it's uh, telling us now what do we do? We execute everything that we want. Let it run. And uh, once again, there is no theme music, so I don't know if it's almost done or not, but it's finished. I'll click on Finish, Next, Start my SQL Workbench after setup, which is right now. After I click Finish, we should be getting the uh, Workbench starting. Once again, as I said in another video, I wanted this to be under 10 minutes. Right now, I'm just above 11. And that's fine but the workbench is installed MySQL is installed and we're doing well let's see what happens if I were to click on this local instance that we installed where the root user uh, the password is going to be the password that I typed in that one and here we are we have a workbench working and the server if I click on server status, it is running. So we can rock and roll and move along. Uh, for now, though, I will close this. And uh, I'll see you in the next video where we actually download a, some data and create a database.